Hi, friends. Thanks for joining us. Do us a favor. Smash that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We can't thank you all enough. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Yeah, you can find us Ray Benny Sports. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Check us also on Reddit and Discord and leave us a rating on your favorite podcast provider. Let's get into Bomber Talk. Brought to you by Fahrenheit Airbrushing. Stand out on the ice, pavement, or on the field, or in the stands with a custom airbrushed helmet, goalie mask, or any project. A local Manitoba business with affordable solutions. Check out Fahrenheit Airbrushing on Facebook or call them at 204-891-7431. And also, don't forget to tell them that Ray and Benny sent you. So what was the uh, most encouraging thing from the Stamps game? I'm going to have to go with offense, man, because we've been waiting for it to break out. We've been waiting for Zach Kalaros to break out, and we've been waiting for Oliveira to have, well, I mean, his second. I mean, obviously, he had a good game against, um, oh, my God, why am I drawing a blank here? Ottawa the week before, and now Calgary. So we're seeing him to get his stride. The guy's already leading the, the league in rushing already. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Zach Kalaros, uh, very good game for him. I know he threw two interceptions, especially the first pass of the game and all that, and then another bad one in the end zone. But he fought back 27 to 36, 344, uh, a couple touchdowns. Him and Ontario Wilson uh, just went off together and, you know, forms a pretty good chemistry, and hopefully that can carry on from this game. Yeah, for me specifically, it has to be Ontario Pokey Wilson. Like, this is, kid has just, I know, I know it's one game and you can't <laughs> forecast a career, but in regards to game performances, these just entered the conversation with guys like Derek Armstrong and James Murphy. Like this guy took the volume and he went with it. It's so encouraging to know that there's another piece when you have guys like Lawler and shown out now teams can't ignore this guy on a game day. And it showed at game day when it opened things up for Drew Latarski and Nick Dembski underneath. They had a lot of good volume. They made critical catches and tough receptions when they had to. So the receiver unit as a whole is a lot more encouraging than they were in the past few weeks ever since losing the big keys. Of course, it helps when you have a bona fide passer like Zach Caleros, uh, who kind of shoved a good game in my face after questioning Caleros. Well, I wasn't really questioning Caleros. I was just admitting the fact that Father Time is for real. But he found great receivers. He made some great throws. Uh, but yeah. Ontario Wilson, man, that's the most encouraging thing for me from that game. Yeah, shout out to the uh, Bombers wide receiver coach, and, and I'm going to name drop him, Kevin Burgoyne, uh, because Kevin, or we fall, came in, right? Had a great game before getting hurt, uh, and he's new to the CFL. Ontario Wilson, again, new guy coming in and and playing a great game here as well. So that just adds to now you got Lucky Whitehead, Lawler uh, coming back soon, hopefully. So, yeah, this this wide receiver crew will get back on track and be, be good again there, but – Zach, or sorry, Zach Claros, again, a couple interceptions that were iffy, especially the one, second one to uh, Dembski, where Robertson was basically looked like the primary receiver on that one. Um, but he's still making mistakes again, like last year, but he is finding ways again to move that ball downfield uh, finally in this game that he wasn't doing earlier in the season. Well, he had the 100 yard drive to win the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Exactly. The game. And then the last uh, drive when they got the ball back to finish the game. Yep. Right. And not give the ball back to Calgary. What concerns you most? Uh, I can only mention the D-line so many times, so I'm not going to even talk about them. And it's the return game. Averaging less than 20 yards per kick return in the CFL is not a good thing. Uh, and it looks like the Bombers are moving on from Chris Smith, uh, for this game at least, because um, he's going to the PR. And Myron Mitchell was always going to the PR, and they're bringing in Cody Case, so he might play dual threat as a returner and as a receiver and it hurts especially seeing Janarian grant go crazy with toronto so the special teams <laughs> is just really disappointing and they're gonna have to figure it out and i'm sure some of it goes on to mike miller because they're not holding off calgary's contain often the returner had four or five or even six red jerseys around him with maybe two or three bomber, bomber blockers so something fundamentally is wrong with the scheme that they're running that, they're, that there's no lanes on the outside or the inside to go to confidently so i won't put it all on chris smith i'm gonna maybe put a bit on mike miller and who knows how much o'Shea has touch on that but yeah the, the return game is absolutely concerning me uh more than the d-line yeah and the funny thing is they've actually the coverage team has actually kind of figured things out a bit better this year uh containing a lot of those returners that they were having troubles with last year we'll see this week with uh, alfred coming in but 
yeah, that's they, they do have to fix something there for sure. But for me, it's a defense. Um, I know I know I know they had a couple turnovers, a couple sacks, uh, some big plays, Dietrich Nichols with the touchdown, but they still gave up over 400 yards here and 130 again on the ground. So they made some big plays, but we're giving up a lot of yards. And Jake Mayer, again, like you said, the pass rush had time to throw. He got sacked once, and that was late in the game by Jake Thomas. But yeah. other than that, he had plethora of time. Um, so maybe with Taiwan Garbutt coming back, they were pretty high on him. Hopefully he plays this week. Hopefully that'll help because – and then Anthony Bennett apparently was in the locker room um, after this Great. game as well. So maybe they're probably bringing, possibly bringing him back as well. Because, yeah, they need some help there, and, and they need to get after the quarterbacks. If you can't get after the quarterbacks in the CFL, you're, yeah. you're doomed, man. You're doomed, especially with that huge field. Jake Thomas got the only sack of the game. Yeah, late in the game. But at the same time, <laughs> Meyer was under pressure. I wouldn't say he had a plethora amount of time. The secondary had a horrible game. Like, there was some good coverage. Bonds uh, Bonds with a horrible pass interference call. Thank God. That, oh, thank goodness that only left to a field goal. But the secondary and their it was the same problem last year where there's so much space right off the snap that yeah. it really gives the receivers an advantage of running those double moves on the secondary. And like, I, I'm not understanding it, especially when you don't have a formidable pass rush, you can't back off guys that much. You no. can't. No. So there's something well, wrong systematically as well. Well, yeah, and that was, that was kind of uh, very noticeable in that third and three um, oh. after the Bombers had taken the lead in the second half there that Calgary converted and, and drove the rest away for a touchdown. Again, there you can't you can't give them those easy three yards. Like it, it's third down and three has got to be tough. You know, it yes. should be tough, but they made it a lot easier for Calgary and made Dickinson, Dave Dickinson look like a, a genius on that play kind of thing. But yeah, they need they need to get better and the big plays. They gave up a 53 yard catch and run to Phil Pot, Jalen Phil Pot, and then a 53 yard run by Dietrich Mills. Um oh, but, top of the game too. Yeah, but Calgary did the same, right? Dietrich Mills had 108 yards in the first half. Yeah. And I know, yeah, the Bombers D clamped down on a bit, but he only had 22 in the second half, and it was Lotmeyer on Jake Meyer. And he got the job done for the most part. You know, bad interception to Dietrich Nichols there that uh, led to a touchdown. But, uh, but yeah, that defense has got to tighten up a little bit. It's been, it was playing good, that D, where it gave up a, it bended, but didn't break. This game, it, it did both. It bended and it broke after. Yeah, and I shouldn't pick on uh, Terrell Bonds in regards to that in, uh, pass, pass interference. That was actually really tight defense, and the official was just in the perfect spot to see him clasp that arm on the inside a little bit without, uh, without the receiver or the, without the <laughs> ref being in perfect position and without having uh, interference review. That would have been a beautiful defensive play. Just good on the ref. Props to the ref. And speaking uh, of that, that also was the one, what sorry, there was only three penalties that whole game for the Bombers, and that was the biggest yeah. one, really. So also what concerns me is Oliveira getting four carries in the first half. But it's just come on, what are you doing? But they won, so I'll relax. Yeah, Calgary was clamping down on that run or or trying to make the bombers pass with whatever they were doing there, but they finally four figured times. out this, hey, yeah. Four well, times. What I guess did whatever, they figure out? Whatever they were showing them on that, because they figured it out in the second half, right? And then they, they woke Oliveira up, and they were going crazy with Wilson there, too. So, but yeah. <laughs> what do the Bombers have to do to beat Saskatchewan? Offense, defense, special teams. Uh, offense, don't throw interceptions. I know that's kind of no-duh, but honestly, if Caleros can keep the interception column on the stat sheet clean, he could rack up a whole bunch of yards against this porous Rough Rider defense. Like, they averaged more than 310 yards against. Yeah. And they didn't look, oh, and then they got smoked hard. But, and, and they also don't have Hardrick. Maybe. He could yeah. be hurt. I saw he was on crutches, but I was trying to see a fo find a follow up to that, but I didn't, I couldn't see anything. We'll you have know to wait I for the prac when they come to practice and get a full, you know, they won't release that information yet unless they have to, but. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, they got to put up the yards. Put up the yeah, yards. Well, Don't throw interceptions. Yeah, taking a look at it, Saskatchewan's pasty is it's there for the taking, right? I think every four, no, sorry, three out of the five games, QBs have gone over 300 yards. And, and one of the other ones, they were at 295, so they were close. So I, this may be, as much as we want to see Oliveira at times, Saskatchewan has actually been better at stopping the run uh, than they did have the pass. So this may be a Zach Pilaro's game that he needs to take over. And like you say, 
keep it clean, no mistakes, especially the end zone interceptions. The end zone yeah. interceptions have to stop. What a Those really throw. have to stop. Like you're driving, you're in field goal range. You know, you don't need to force anything downfield if it's not there. No, he and can't. He's, he... he's done that too many times. Exactly. The short throws in the end zone. We've seen that I mean, two or three times now that kills drives. Uh, I don't even know why I started talking about Hardrick when I'm talking about whatever. But any which way, <laughs> don't and no interceptions, please, Zach Caleros. Yeah, and the old old line again. Um, Carlos took some big hit or a couple big hit, hits in this game again, but I mean that's that's going to happen. But uh, Saskatchewan yeah. ended up having four sacks against BC. Anthony Lanier and with two, and Mika Johnson with one. So the Bombers are going to have to be aware of those guys, and that old line is going to have to have another strong game, which they have, especially opening holes for Oliveira and all that. So. They're going to need to be on top of it because that Sask D pass rush has been pretty good so far. How about on defense? Uh, yeah, get up there, Shea Patterson, right? I mean, we've been waiting for a pass rush to go off. You have to, he's a young uh, QB in there and had a decent game against BC 275 or 278 uh, yards, yeah. no touchdowns, though. But so they have to get after him, make him make some mistakes. BC was able to sack him four times. Uh, but Saskatchewan's got some good wide receivers, right? In Amula, Shane Bain, Kiefer, uh, Schaefer Baker. Um, so they, they got a good aerial attack that I think uh, could uh, put some yards up against his bomber D if they're not getting a pass rush. If, speaking of Jamarcus Hardrick, if he's not playing, Willie Jefferson has to eat. Yeah. This could be a big game for Willie Jefferson if Saskatchewan's biggest offseason pickup and former bomber isn't good to go. And I think that'll open up the blitz because even, yeah, even Biggie got to Meyer hard late in the game on those blitzes. So I'm not giving up on their blitz yet. I think they are causing a bit of pressure and they really need to cause pressure. Like you said, on Shea Patterson, don't let him get his feet set to hit those, what, three, four, all CFL receivers, possibly like they're oh. good. And you, and you got a good running back in the backfield with AJ Oled who, I mean, stats wise this year, numbers like he's only averaging 3.8. So that's going to be a dis bit of a disappointment for Saskatchewan after, you know, picking him up in a heralded signing and all that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. That's not, that's not very good numbers. And he's a couple fumbles already so far this year. So they didn't just get him to be a short yardage back and pound in those touchdowns. They got him for a lot more than that. So bombers run D hasn't been great at times. So this may be the game for him too. Their O-line is also a work in progress. Yeah. True. True that. Special teams get the return game going. Like we yeah. said, they're changing returners. Uh, like I, I can't. I already said my piece on the return game. Like yeah. maybe O'Shea does have to be a little more hands on with Mike Miller because this special teams unit is struggling. There is nowhere for the returners to go. Uh, their coverage is good. It's fine. Yeah. Jameson Sheehan played I. That's yeah. coming into play. But this return game is almost non-existent. Yeah, big big block on the punt too, uh, or a partial block, I guess. It still doesn't count as a full block or a yeah. uh, as a block at all, right? Your camera's going wonky. Twice um, <laughs> tonight. It's the humidity. <laughs> uh, for me, again, yeah, oh, we got a good returns. Keep uh, Mariel Alfred in check, right? Yeah. And let let Sergio Castillo still cook. <laughs> as much as I want those uh, touchdowns instead of field goals, if Castillo is hitting those uh, consistently from fifty plus, holy crap, that's great to have, right? absolutely four or five last game too so bummer fans put your comments in the comment section below let's take a trip around the cfl what's the biggest surprise this week for you that it took so long for the elks to fire chris <laughs> jones it's about damn time like and i'm not saying his coaching career is over uh he might get sniffs as a coordinator or a consultant maybe even in the nfl but the days of him being a general manager or whatever, those in the CFL, I think that's done. Yeah. That's it's done. So that's maybe it's not a big surprise at all. It just took so long to get rid of him. And again, it's that cap, right? That cap could have been playing into it. And uh, now they got to the point where it's okay, we just gotta we gotta move on and, and find some wins here, right? Because the season's already getting out of getting lost again. Yeah, Jerry's Jackson ain't gonna do that. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see hopefully i mean it, it's always good to have new blood in the cfl so hopefully he can do well he's been he's old blood he's been in the cfl for a long time well, I'm talking and about look this guy like why isn't he using a trey ford package is chris jones just telling him no you can't use them like Probably. make a decision as an offensive coordinator put the guy in on packages packages 
Link. Well, hey, we're going to find out for sure right away if, if that's what was happening, right? Because if Trey Ford comes in and, and Dutton has a few plays here and there, then you're going to know it was Chris Jones that kept them out. Clown show. Uh, for me, I, I liked uh, – well, the biggest surprise was the way the Toronto offense uh, – had their game plan against Montreal's D. And, and I know Janarian Grant had a great game, returned one for a touchdown, but Toronto did a great game. Uh, Cameron Dukes, just game manager, 130-something yards, right? Uh, but the rushing game was 183 yards, and you don't see that against this Montreal D usually. So that surprised me the way they came out. And I know Fajardo got hurt, so that changed things as well. But the way they kind of attacked that Montreal do, maybe they exposed something that the, for the rest of the CFL to take a look at. Um, but yeah, it was a great game plan by Didwinnie. How big do you think this loss of Sean Lemon will be now? Yeah, that, that could be pretty big, right? Maybe he's, he's a lot bigger piece than we were thinking in there. And, for and, sure. and especially he's, in that, and especially in that run game uh, kind of thing, I, they still got sacks. They still got ad Dukes and all that stuff, but yeah, the running game really took off for Toronto. And him as a locker room leader. Yeah. That automatically changes the culture when you don't have that guy in the room. Yeah, exactly. Goat of the week slash underachiever. Uh, you go first. I'm going to give it to uh, Bord- Boris Beatty. Uh, I mean, you could probably throw Chris Jones in here too, but I guess he's not the one kicking off. But after the guy tied it, helped tie the game up with that late touchdown and the late uh, convert, uh, he proceeds to kick a ball out of bounds, which gives Ottawa the ball at the 50. And then uh, the Elks just mess it up from there, and Ottawa hits the winning field goal. One completion to get in the field goal yeah, range. Thirty yards. One so. completion. Thirty. That yards is so. absolutely one of the worst plays I've ever <laughs> seen in my life that cost a team a game. Like, <laughs> and yes, obviously, job. overtime was there, and it could have went differently. Who knows? That's not a guaranteed win. But mm-hmm. the fact that you kick it out of bounds and you give them automatic field position, where they're two first downs away from getting a f- into field goal position that's the worst that's horrible <laughs> star of the week i'm gonna go janarian grant yeah our boy drew brown did crazy but janarian grant two kickoffs one for 103 and the other one was 42 yards that was his worst return 42 yards on the kick second week in a row that he's brought a kick return to the house averaging more than 20 yards average on a punt return uh, on five returns with the longest being 43 this guy's crazy bombers ugh. they ugh. so yes generian grant star of the week for me the, the worst thing that i saw his contract i, I think it was i kind of I made it on three down nation i think eighty five thousand dollars uh with possibility with incentives to get just over 90 yep I, I mean, I, I know the Bombers probably had no more cap space after everything. And maybe after Dalton Schoen got hurt and went out, they would have went back and tried to get him. But that's a that's a big loss. That is a big loss, especially watching their return men this year. Uh, start of the week for me, I'll have to give it to Justin McInnes. That guy went off. 14 targets, 14 catches, 243 yards. Canadian wide receiver, which is great for the league to see these Canadian wide receivers, especially with the Phil Potts and all that stepping up this year. Um, yeah, and Dembski last year with a thousand yards. It's great to see. So I'm going to give it to Justin McInnes. Yeah, I think I took Justin McInnes in fantasy this week, actually. Uh-huh. But I think I put Oliveira back in last minute instead of uh, Mills. Ugh. It's close, though. I'm just trying. <laughs> Imagine Not if you had Ontario deal. Wilson and Justin McInnes in your lineup. Oh, who saw that? <laughs> I should have taken Ontario Wilson. Do you know who I put in? Aju, Aju. Zero, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> zero, 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 zero zero stat line give me a break with pokey wilson having an all-time bomber performance who is your oh sorry did i skip something uh coach yeah. on the hot seat there you go <laughs> <laughs> coach on the hot seat for me no one chris jones is gone so no one's on the hot seat i think everyone's safe for this year yeah for me again it would have been chris jones for sure uh before the firing today uh scott milaner just for me is getting close uh Guy needs to get a win here. I, I know he's first coaching this year, but the team hasn't looked great uh, coming out of the gate. I don't think he's going to get fired anytime soon, but he's going to be the next guy on that list that they're going to be talking about, especially if they lose again and go 0-5 uh, to the Argos this week. Yeah, that co- coaching cap is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to quick shots. How will the Owls fare without Fajardo for a while? You go first. Yeah, if, he, if he's out for a bit, uh, at least they got the bye this week. I think they're going to possibly struggle after watching Caleb Evans uh, come in against Toronto there. Uh, again, 
the defense could hold the fort and do enough uh, and allow Caleb Williams just to do enough to win games. Uh, but I think it'll be a lot tougher on them. If Caleb Evans can keep mistakes down, get a week with the playbook, depend on that good running game that they have, and their defense is still good, they can be a 500 team, maybe a little more before 500, and still make the playoffs. But oh, yeah. Ottawa will be breathing on them. But even if Ottawa is breathing on them, I still think they don't have to worry about Hamilton. Ugh. I'm They're still not awesome. sold on Ottawa being good yet. They're better than Hamilton. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm not saying that, for sure. But we'll see with, when they play some of the tougher teams. With Ontario Wilson having an all-time bomber performance, who is your favorite bomber receiver not named Stiegel? I was, I'm still a fan of Jeff Boyd. Only played four seasons here. Uh, but it was really when I was getting into bomber football as a kid. It's because of another stupid Cal Murphy contract controversy. He traded him to Toronto. This dude only played four seasons in Winnipeg and had over 5,100 yards. He's still top 10 receiver bomber yeah. all time. So speed, route running, hands, size. Jeff Boyd was great. And he opens the field up for James Murphy for sure. And that's who I'm picking, James Murphy. <laughs> Again, growing up watching uh, first uh, years watching the CFL and the Bombers is always James Murphy out there. Uh, so watching him and his yeah, the guy was just dynamic out there, you know, and, and helping the Bombers win a lot in the 80s and early 90s. So, yeah, or I guess not early 90s. He was gone by 90, I guess. He was hurt in the 90 Great Cup, right? So, yeah. But yeah, just watching him growing up was fun. A shout out to Terrence Edwards. Terrence Edwards, too. Which oh, yeah. coach out there would be the best fit for the Elks rebuild? Again, I know you were saying it, but I'd like to see what Jerry and Jerry's Jackson can do for this year and see if he can build anything. Uh, I don't think they're going to probably go in any other direction for this year, so we'll see what he can do. But, hey, maybe maybe if Noel Thorpe, uh, D, Montreal, D, plays lights out again, uh, he may get that opportunity. But, again, maybe Edmonton doesn't want to go back to a, a defensive guy and maybe wants to go offense. I'll say Richie Hall. Give him a shot at head coach again, especially on a rebuild, especially with young players. I think he's a good temperament for a rebuild. Uh, and I think maybe with a lot of time under O'Shea, if he wants a head coaching job, maybe he's good, you know, going off into the sunset after these great times in Winnipeg. But I'd like to see him get another shot as a head man. Who would you like to see Hanola paired with from the current Jets roster? Miller, Hanola, third pairing. That's all, honestly. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing what him and Sandberg could do together for a bit, even. But yeah, it's probably going to be, if if Hanola makes it, it'll probably be Miller and Hanola. Hanola. Hanola, holy wow, it's rough to get out. It's yeah. either going to be Miller and Hanola or Miller and Stanley on that third pairing anyways, right? Unless someone else steps up. Who are the current top three NFL QBs? Man, I had a hard time with this. Besides Mahomes at one, um, number two, Lamar, I, you know, and then give it to Jalen Hurts at number three. I don't know. Like, I was looking at this going, I, I don't, like, CJ Stroud to me had a very good year last year, but it was only one year. But looking at it, I couldn't pick out a clear top three besides after Mahomes, really. Mahomes, Burrow, and Lamar Jackson. Are you buying into Jesse March as a head coach for Canada? After what we saw in Copa America and after we saw what he did in press conference and calling out the, the politics and maybe second-class uh, status of Canada on these big tournaments? Yeah, you know what? I, I didn't know much about the guy coming in, uh, but Canada played a very good tournament. I know a lot of their games and it won nothing, uh, red cards for the other teams, but they had a very good show or good showing to me against Argentina. And then they looked good against Uruguay and probably should have won that game. So I like the way they're going. They had scoring opportunities. They just couldn't finish. So I'd like to yep. see him build from there. I'm going to walk back on my comments on Jesse March. I would like to see him because obviously he's emotionally invested in this team and they're playing for this dude. Benny, you have anything to say to our friends? Uh, you know what? Just thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and follow and have a good week. And in the words of Ed Whalen, in the meantime, in between time, that's it. Another edition of Ray and Benny Talk Sports. But if you don't know who Ed Whalen is, go watch some Calgary Stampede Wrestling. Educate yourself. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded angry. I should have been angry. Educate <laughs> yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Good night. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook tiktok instagram and twitter at ray denny sports and don't forget to check out our youtube channel leave a like leave a comment tell us what you think